Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's episode on Let's Talk Face. You don't want to miss these two fundamental truths we're about to talk about. I got my crystal ball right here because we're about to tell the future. <laughs> so stay tuned for this episode of Let's Talk Face. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, and I'm glad that you're able to join us tonight on Let's Talk Faith. My name is Pastor Tito Dagnino, and I'm here with our pastor, pastoral staff, our lead pastor, Pastor Pete Cordova of Douglas First Assembly of God. This pastor Pete, thank, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Um, I always look forward to these times together, and I'm excited about what we're going to learn today. Yes, yes. yes. We have our teaching pastor, Pastor yes. Ernesto Baracas. Pastor Ernesto, and, thank, and you. thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad to hear it's always a very good experience to, mm-hmm. to be around you guys and, and discuss the scripture. It is. We've been going through this series of our 16 fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God. It's what we believe in. It's our bread and butter. And uh, it's so hard, as you saw in last week's episode with Pastor Ernesto Baracas with the deity of Christ and the fall of mankind. We try to minimize and limit our time together yes. because there's just so much to say about Pastor Baracas. There's just so much to say that oh, yes. our time gets uh, away from us. But here at Douglas First Assembly of God in Douglas, Arizona, there in our Wednesday night Bible study, we have Pastor Pete and Pastor Barajas that are in our adult class going through the 16 fundamentals, starting from 1 and ending in 16. Yes. And they're going more in depth. And they have probably an hour, a little but bit more, more an hour. But yeah, they're going more in depth with these subjects. And more people are involved asking questions mm-hmm. and sometimes in those classes from what i hear because i'm i'm with the youth, youth with uh with marcia jones but, for, but from what i hear you guys only get through one a night sometimes two and i yeah. how good these uh fundamental truths are but here we are and we're gonna get started well it's it's almost fair time here in douglas we have our uh, coaches county fair coming up and wherever you're at whether you have the state fair or the city fair whatever it may be it's a, it's a good time, but there are also some things in there that is just not biblical. And that's why I brought up my crystal ball here. This is my crystal ball. <laughs> okay. Over there yeah. at the fairgrounds, you have people reading cards, reading hands, saying that they could tell the future, what's going to happen in your life, or what the world's going to be like. But we all know that those are all fake. Yes. Those are all not truth. Yes. That is not of God. But here, that's why I mentioned in the beginning, we have our crystal ball, which is the word of God, and we're going to get into our fundamental truth, number 14, which is the millennial reign of Christ. Mm-hmm. And here, <clears throat> as we talk about the end time events, we talk about the rapture first. You know, that's the next, that's on the, the event times. That's what's yes. going to be happening in the future. We already know that's coming. It mm-hmm. hasn't happened yet, but here in the word of God, we see it that it's coming. It's next. You know, that's our blessed mm-hmm. hope. And then from there, it keeps going on and on. But what we're going to talk about is the number four is the millennium reign of Christ, in which Pastor Baracas here is going to read in Revelations. If you have your Bibles, keep them out, keep them handy, get a marker, whatever it may be, highlight the important stuff, because this stuff here is very important. So Pastor Baracas here is going to tell the future. Amen. The real future. <laughs> there you go. And he's not going to charge you a penny. He's not going to charge you a penny. No, I do it for free. Bro. <laughs> so so yeah. Pastor Baracas, really, we, Revelations. We, if you have your Bible, Revelations chapter 20. We're going to start off in verse 1 to 3. So okay. Pastor Baracas. Okay, this is what it says. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having a key for the abyss and, and holding in his hand a great, a great chain. He sees the dragon and that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan and bound him for a thousand years and he threw him into the abyss and he locked and sealed, sealed it over him to keep him from re- deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. There you go. The devil going to be bound for a thousand years. Now, this is questions that have been turned out about this this part of the uh, part of the, the end time calendar events. When the millennium comes and Satan is bound for a thousand years, that means Christ is reigning. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that people have a second chance in a way? That's a question that I've heard a lot of people say because rapture comes. That means, you know, what's next? The Great Tribulation, which... You know, I pray that none of you are here for that. 
and then Armageddon, and then the Millennium. So there's still people here on the earth going through these things. But when Christ is here on earth, reigning for a thousand years, when the devil is kept away, so he doesn't deceive, does that mean there's a second chance, or a second hope for people? That's well, I think what's important to consider is the type of government and environment that the millennium is. Because the millennium, it's like a demonstration to everyone that is part of it of what perfect government looks like because Jesus Christ is the king. He's, the king. He's governing with a rod of iron, the Bible says, and the wooden scepter. So it's, it's God's perfect reign on earth. So people have a chance to experience what it is like to be governed by God himself on earth. Uh, I think what it is, it's uh, both an opportunity to learn about the goodness and righteousness of God, but it will also be at the end of the millennium when the devil is set free, unfortunately, another opportunity for people to listen to temptation and some will give into it and will fall back. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say without having scripture in front of me to support it, but from how I understand the millennium is that uh, it's, it's almost more like an opportunity. Here's God's perfect government. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. God makes no mistakes. He does everything right. It's perfect. Do you want it or do you not want it? Because it's not really, I don't see it too much as a second opportunity because you're not like lost trying to say, God, give me another chance. You're in the millennium. And it's perfect. Everything is perfect in the millennium. And God is saying, do you want it? Because here comes Satan to try to deceive you to rebel against God. So mm -hmm. God presents you with something good and you have a choice whether to keep it or not. It's a little bit like like the Garden of Eden. Yes. The much. Garden of Eden, everything was perfect. Everything. And, and, and man and Adam and Eve had everything, but they lost it. Because here comes Satan and tempted them and they went after Satan. So would you say this is kind of like a repeat? You just brought up the Garden of Eden. Yeah. They have a choice because God is not going to force yeah. anybody. So you have a choice. And again, Pastor Barakas last week talked about the deity of Christ. Mm hmm who was God, yeah. came down as a human form, perfect, sinless, did miracles. So people at that time were seeing the Messiah, seeing everything. Christ was telling them the parables of everything, the goodness of God and, and everything, but yet some people still rejected him. Yes. And here's the amazing thing is that in the Garden of Eden, there was no other civilization before. That was the beginning. So man didn't know anything except God and everything being perfect. Mm -hmm. But in the millennium, there will be people that will know what happened before the millennium. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the battle of Armageddon and all the evil the devil has caused and how much pain and suffering the devil has brought on the world. They don't have something to compare it with. Yes. And now here is God's kingdom, perfect and well. And yet they will still choose the devil. That, that yes. blows me away. Yes, yes. Because Adam didn't have that. Mm. Adam, it was the first creation. So he didn't have yes. anything bad to compare it with. But some people that go into the millennium will actually remember what they came out of. You know, they'll rem that there was a battle of Armageddon, that there was an Antichrist, and that, there, and that there was sin in the world, and there was pain, and now look how beautiful what God gives us. So they'll have something to compare it, but some will still go after the devil. Yes. You still see it as, again, it goes back to what Pastor Barajas was saying last week, the fall of mankind, where that seed in us doesn't ever go away. Th you're, that is, you're living a thousand years with Christ. Everything's see, perfect. Everything's perfect. Yes. You've seen everything. And yet, when the devil's released us after a thousand years, yet people will still see like kind of the rebellion and be, ooh, this looks even better than what Christ yeah. had. This looks even more tempting and I'm gonna go after this. And there's that seed still of the, of the fall of man. 
You were gonna say something, Pastor. But I yeah, it, it is sad. If, if I interpret the Bible right, Pastor Pete, it seems to me like uh, some sinners are going to survive that tribulation mm -hmm. and get into the millennium with with all of us per se with all of us but what it amazes me even more the stubbornness of, of the people because even uh experimenting for 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 a thousand years the goodness of the lord they're still going to choose the evil to right. do wrong yeah. and then after that it seems to me like there will be no more remedy for them because because the end of everything comes and and all of a sudden we're going to find ourselves before before the throne of god which is which is what we're going to deal in maybe next week or the week yeah. after. So, but it amazes me, the stubbornness, man. Um, if you want to take that as a, the millennium as, as a second chance that God is giving them, might be so. Might be so. But even with, a, with, with that second chance, uh, they still choose wrong. I was going to say that, but sometimes even, uh, even second chances don't... Don't, don't change people. Don't change. Yeah, they, they they still continue choosing wrong. Yes, yes. I mean, even though with all the things and the tribulation that they went through, yeah. because a tribulation, those three and a half yeah, yeah. years, there will be more than enough. Can yeah. you imagine the world? The world destroyed itself by yeah. all of a sudden the stars falling and, and earthquakes and this and that. I mean, we've seen a lot of, of, of that lately. But I'm pretty sure that it's not, it's not even a, uh, worthy of comparison with what is going to happen after all, all, all the millennium. Because the enemy is, gonna, is going mm -hmm. to be loose. And, and knowing that he's got that much time, man, he's going to come against the world with all, with all his fury. You know? and, and that's something that we must take in consideration. It, just, it, just, it like, keeps making you ask yourself that question, why? Do we as human beings still choose to turn away from God? It happened in the Garden of Eden after Adam saw everything perfect. You know, even here where we're living right now at this present time, we still see the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. We still see the presence of God. We still see the, the, the results of, of God's hand in our lives and other people's lives, but yet we still turn away from God. And then yet, even later, later on, after Christ is in reign for a thousand years, and people are witnessing this, <coughs> and still later on, they'll still choose. It just goes back to, again, people ask all the time, well, if God's so good, why does he allow these things to happen? If God was so good, he made Garden of Eden perfect, then why did this happen? It goes back to that, and again, it's God is not going to force us to do anything. Man chose this. That was the consequences back then here in this present time still god is still here present mm -hmm. but we choose not to follow god these are the consequences no. you're not going to be in the rapture. you're going to be left behind when the rapture comes yes the millennium comes and yet you still witness and see the reign of christ and yet us choose to turn away from god here comes the next consequences so it's like we keep turning ourselves, looking at God, God, well, this is your fault, this is your fault, this is your fault, why right? you're so good, this and this. But all boils down to choices. Yes. And God is going to be completely justified pick of, uh, because of the fact of what you're talking about, that man has been given chance and showed mercy yeah. and opportunity, and, and God has given him like the best of Garden of Eden, the millennial, uh, has, has saved his life many times from dying. How many people have had chances, mm -hmm. have been this close to death, and God has given, and still they won't give their life to the Lord. Yes. So God is justified when he finally, before the great white throne judgment, says, it's over. Now you stand before me. You 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 never made a decision for me. Now depart from me. And you, you made that point right there where people have been close to death yeah. and said, oh, Pastor P or Pastor Barajas, I've had this encounter and now I know God's looking after me and you know, I want to follow him, I want to go to church. But then later on, they choose, eh, well, he saved me, you know. Nothing so, happened. I mean, we've all been guilty of that, but forgetting, forgetting how blessed we all are. Yeah. You know, it goes back as the last subject, it's only for like a minute. When you pray, you know, I don't know what to pray for. You got to start thanking God. <laughs> oh, we're done. Yes. What can Just you for being for? saved, yeah. You thank God. Well, can you open your eyes? Can yeah. you see? Yeah. Can you move your arm? Can you walk? Uh -huh. And this goes on and on and on. 
And, yes. you know, but God is good, and yet that's how that's how I brought that question. Is this technically another chance yeah. that people can see Christ and His goodness, and then He lets the devil out? It's like a bull. Have you ever been a little bull, uh, right? <laughs> those bull fightings? Mm-hmm. That bull's been caged up, banging the, the the metal and ready to come out, charging. But what people don't do, like those, what are those called? Those matadors? Yeah, mm-hmm. matadores. Yeah, matador. They run. They avoid. They, I mean, it's kind of scary. You got to put myself. <laughs> but people, they don't. They allow that bull to come and ooh, it looks just yeah. Yes. Allow them to pick them up, take them, and that's it. Pastor Pete. Um, you had the next scripture, okay. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. And verse 9. And verse 9. <clears throat> and the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And then verse 9 says, They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. This just does a, I get pictures in my mind what this will look like. There's nothing on earth right now compared to this. Mm -hmm. To think that that there will be, everything will be like, everything that that is brutal, that is cruel, that is savage, that is hard because of sin will be gone. Where it says wolf was a lamb, leopard was a young goat. This, This is what the wolf eats. This is what the leopard eats. <laughs> yes, yes. And she'll just lie down with it, and, and it'll be beautiful. I mean, they'll, none of and it says there will be no hurt, no destroy. There will be no no killer instinct. It's like a heaven on earth. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll, no killer instinct. It'll be beautiful. This is creation totally modified, totally changed. The, uh, the nature of animals is totally changed. When, when man sinned, Sin came into the world and affected man, but not only man, it affected all creation. Oh, then, oh, that, yes. That's why we have tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes. That's why we have animals killing one another and, and men mm. killing one another. And But part of salvation, uh, and, and I, I gave Tito the scripture, Pastor Tito, and it's found in Romans chapter uh, 8, uh, verse 20, 22. 22. And this it talks about creation is also waiting for the day of redemption. Mm-hmm. We are saying it's mainly spiritual. One day it involves the transformation of our bodies. Our bodies will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. We'll have new bodies. But what about creation? Creation cannot continue the way it's going now because it's messed up because of sin. And it says, for we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now, waiting for its redemption. So the millennium is that time. Is that and time? it prophesies and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful time. Yes. The time of the future. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me put my in order to sense for me. Okay. <laughs> okay uh, I know that, that most of us have heard the, the phrase that devil made me do it. Mm-hmm. Haven't we? And it is true. All the evil that we do, that humanity does, is provoked by the enemy, by the devil. So can you imagine what the environment of the millennium is going to be without the devil present? We don't have an idea what it's like because we've grown in this in this world full of evil and, and deceitfulness and and this and that and treason and God knows what else. You, you know, we, yeah. we grow in. So, but that is going to be something really special. And, and I would like to say that the sinners are going to be influenced by that environment. Because even them, even them, I don't think they're going to feel like doing, like doing some evil. Because the enemy won't be present. It won't be present. So they're not going to feel like uh, go and steal your property, go and kill this, or go and shoot with, with my my husband or my wife or whatever. The enemy is not going to be there. So nobody will provoke those mm-hmm. those feelings in you. So uh, I would like to say again that uh, that they're going to be influenced by that, but evidently it won't. It won't. But 
that is going to be a sensational time when everything flourishes and turns like a garden of Eden, no doubt about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. So it's interesting how the animals do better than us. Huh? It really because is. Because the animals don't, once they change to their new nature during the millennium, they don't go back to their no, old nature. No, no they right. don't. But and man does. We do. Yeah. <laughs> and it is yeah. hard, ain't it? Because we're supposed to be rational beings. Yeah. That, that reason, that thing, that... Uh, we're not supposed to be the animals. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't know. But that I'm looking forward to that time, I am. I am. Because just like that, nature, and, and I'm pretty sure that you guys do, and many other people, we need that earth, and us need a break. Amen. 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 Moving on, uh, Pastor Peter, you had the uh, scripture in Ephesians. Okay. Ready, Ephesians chapter 4. But before, <coughs> before we want to have scripture, that's the millennial in the crowd, the number 14 fundamental truth. These are all end time events, and a lot of people look at these and they're scared. Mm -hmm. Some people are afraid to even read Revelations. I was one of them. Yeah. I didn't want to know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I'll, this is literally telling us the future. What's going to happen? What Christ is going to do? Who's going to come in? And what's, what's the world going to come down to? So people are still afraid of it, but yet they still won't turn to Christ. Yes. So, you know, the millennial reign of Christ is just a thousand years of him on earth. Him showing his glory. But yet, why doesn't anybody want that for eternity? Give your life to the Lord. Yes. Live more than a thousand years with Christ in his reign. Eternity. Yeah. For eternity. And that's where... Our number 11 fundamental truth comes in, the ministry. Mm -hmm. If people don't know about the millennium, because these end time events, people can get confused on it, ask a lot of questions. But in the ministry, this is how else we're going to get out there. Mm -hmm. How else we're going to talk about it. And that's Pastor P, if you can read chapter 4 okay. of Ephesians, verses 11 through 13. We're going to be starting the ministry again. And I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of of the statue which belongs to the fullness of Christ. So oh, that's the mm -hmm. ministry. It can only be pastors. It can only be teachers. It can only be apostles. It can only be prophets. That's the ministry. Well, no, I don't think so. No. You know, there was a. Uh, my dad was telling me he he uh, watched a biography of um, of uh, Pastor Greg Laurie. Mm -hmm. He went to a church, gave his life to the Lord. And he asked the church, he asked the pastor, what can I do as a young boy? What can I do to serve? You know what what they gave him? What job they gave him? I think you yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They gave him clean the toilets. Clean the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And he saw that as his ministry. Mm -hmm. Could you could you do that? You know? Wow. Hey, clean the bathroom. This is your ministry. Be proud of it. But he saw it as I'm not doing this for my pastor. Right. I'm not doing this yeah. as a recognition. Yeah. I'm humbling myself, even to the lowest, if that's the lowest, to clean toilets after the service. And maybe he didn't even see it as humbling himself. Like you said, gratitude and love for God. And that's what mm -hmm. it is. It was for Christ. And that was his mission. Yes. And that's what I meant when Pastor Peter read that passage and people see it as, well, to be part of the ministry, I have to preach, I have to teach, I have to do something that's mentioned here or something big. No. Well... I hate to say that, but uh, the, the Bible says God gave us custodians. <laughs> like, but I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say nothing bad about Brother Laurie. I, I admire him. He's, he's a great pastor. But I mean, he started like that. Yeah. And look where he's at now. And look what he said now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's it is. It is something real good. Something. Well, Pastor Barajas was teaching on this, in, and you've got to come to one of our Wednesday yes. classes. We have so much more time. Oh there. yes. But Pastor Barajas was teaching, and what does the word ministry mean? Means servant Sorry. to be server. Yeah. yeah. And in that sense, we're all servants. We all serve exactly. These these are 
generally called by Bible scholars ministry gifts. The, the, the gifts in chapter 12 through 14 that the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians are gifts of the Spirit, and then these are called ministry gifts. These are more formal, like leadership. Yes. But in the strictest sense of the word, Pastor Barajas was teaching that ministry means servanthood. It uh -huh. means working for God and doing In that sense, we're all ministers. Uh, yes, hey, Pastor, in other two cents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I could, I would like to go to, to heaven and, and clean the, the flora around the, oh, the throne of God. Oh, yes, you I see what that. I mean? Yeah. I, I would love to do that. And that and, would not be a put down or, or humbling yourself. No, 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 but I would not, like, because I'll be serving great, God. Yeah. Ah, yeah. But here on earth, serving God is serving people. Yeah. You see what I mean? And, and sometimes we, we, we don't want to do it. Why well, I want to serve this guy so so <laughs> no, but that's servanthood. Yes. Because God living in an environment where where the, the these floors don't need to be clean. Yes. <laughs> you see what I mean? But the only service that we provide to God is a service that we do for each other. Mm, very true. So let's understand that because Amen. because serving God is is not being all the time in the high places. Yeah. We gotta start like Brother Lori. Uh, he yeah. started with, with the toilets, yeah. and man, God lift him up. Amen. God lift him up, and he's got a great ministry. My respect for that guy. Amen. Amen. This 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 broadcast supposed to be my my uh, spotlight. You guys are taking all the words. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> two cents. It's, like, it's, it's been more like five dollars, <laughs> you know, but it's true. And that's what I was getting at when people. <laughs> be asked to be in the ministry they think of what you just talked about good point Very they good. think about why well, i want to be a pastor they yeah. think about what yes. they hear what they read or what they see they don't think about what the word ministry means and you just said it it's mm -hmm. a servant even us as pastors we're servants yeah. yes we are we're servants. absolutely no pastor is higher or anything than his congregation or nothing we are there to serve and serve god first yeah, Jesus said, whoever wants to be first among you, let him be the servant of all. Of all. Yeah. Yes. And even Christ was on this yeah. world and he served. He, he came to serve. He washed the feet he washed of the, the feet. disciples. Yes, yes. Oh, man. That, yeah. That's really something. Mm -hmm. That's humility. So, Pastor Barajas, I gave you uh, Mark. Yes, Mark. Chapter 16. And again, this goes along with serving. You know, if you're, if you're a part of a church, yes. Yeah. Ask around, and you know, there's so many things you can serve in and be in the ministry. And but, Pastor Barajas, go ahead and read that. See the other thing. Right? This is the Lord speaking. He yes. said to them, "Go into the whole world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And this sign will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons." They will speak a new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well. That is the ministry. Go out. Yes. Serve. Yeah. Serve. It's not just in the church. Yeah. Where your work field starts is when you walk out of that church. Yes, exactly. In the church, yes, you know, you're being clapped and everything. Thank you for your, your, I mean, Pastor Pete, you tell us all the time, even though we tell you, Pastor, we want to thank you more than you thank us. You tell all of the people in the church, thank you, you know, thank you for what you do. And then everything, I mean, Pastor Barakas, you've heard it plenty of times. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's going out of those doors. It's when the ministry really starts. When you're going out into the world, being mm -hmm. a servant for Christ. Good points. Very, very yes. good points. Absolutely. It's been... Wow. So again, I mean, we look at the clock and time. <laughs> last time I looked at it, I had about 20 minutes left. And now I'm like, Run wow. Up. But again, we can keep going on and on and on with all these fundamental truths. And again, we're, we just, all three of us want to invite you to our Wednesday Bible classes. Pastor Barajas yes. and Pastor Peter in the adult class going through the, these exact things that we've been talking about, Let's Talk Faith, our podcast. But on Wednesday nights, they're going more in depth. 
more interaction with the people that are showing up. Questions are being asked. Yes. Pastor Peter and Pastor, Pastor Peter and Pastor Maracas are, <laughs> are, you know, answering the questions with the Word of God, you know. But we just want to thank you again for joining us for these podcasts. We love doing them. We love being around each other. Oh, yes. You yeah. know, we have breakfasts together and we, we continue to Amen. talk about our love for Christ. But for the millennial of Christ, ask. You know, contact us here at Douglas First Assembly of God. Come and, come and uh, see us. Ask questions. Amen. You know, and with the ministry, if, you, if you're part of a church and you want to serve, don't. Don't get mad if the pastor asks you to do something that you don't see as top. You know, I want to be at the top and, and you know, I want to teach or I want to preach. No, it's about our service, our service to God mm -hmm. first. Yes. So again, we want to thank you on behalf of Pastor Pete and Pastor Baracas and myself. Thank you and stay tuned till next week when we talk about our last four, or, or well, actually our next four weeks. Yeah, that we we've have. Got, yeah, we've got a few. Man, we've been doing this for so long. <laughs> yeah. Our next We're four weeks. There. Four yeah. weeks. Four more weeks. But again, come and see us on Wednesdays. Again, thank you. And God bless you. Have a good rest of your week. Yes. God bless you. God bless you.